One very cool, but rather challenging way to preserve things is to keep them very, very, very clean. So it's just simply not possible for any bacterial or mold growth to occur, occur because you have packaged this stuff in the absence of any bacteria or mold. This is in fact what natural systems do on their own. The reason why your tomato is probably fine sitting on the counter for a little while, as long as its skin is intact, is because the skin is keeping everything out and there weren't bacteria or molds on the inside of the tomato in the first place. We are not so lucky for things that we have to package ourselves. So if you take the standard kind of US packaging of milk, we keep this in the refrigerator. It's been pasteurized to be sure that there are very, very, very few, or perhaps, eh, no, not down to zero, but very, very, very few microorganisms present, and uh, ideally no harmful microorganisms present. But we still have to keep it into the, in the refrigerator to slow any microbial growth. And this in part is because we keep opening it and closing it again, exposing it to the air. Uh, but uh, those of you who have traveled might have seen the internationally common packaging of milk like this. This doesn't require refrigeration until it's opened, at which point you might want to keep it in the fridge afterwards. In fact, you have to, or it'll have bacterial growth the same way the regular carton of milk does. But what's the key difference between this and this? It's how clean the factory is. Let's get into that. This approach to preserving food by keeping it clean is the basis of jarring and canning and, in fact, uh, most bottling. So in this approach, the step that kills the microbes and the step that makes the package clean uh, are pretty much the same step. Obviously, uh, well, maybe not obviously, the jar that you're working with or the can have, uh, or the bottle have started out clean and what we filled them with was cleaned to the best of our ability uh, and then it is placed in say boiling water if you're doing this at home um, and I should note often you place it in the water before it is boiling then bring it up to boiling so you don't have any shocking on the material uh, or it's inside of a pressure cooker. So not only is the water boiling, but it's boiling at a higher temperature than 100 C. Uh, in an industrial setting, things tend not to be, uh, may not be immersed in a water bath. Uh, something else may be used uh, like a special industrial oven or a steam oven that uh, assures the same temperature path, um, but can do so in a consistent way that doesn't involve getting everything wet and then needing to dry it off afterwards. Uh, you can imagine some of these look a lot like the oven that you might see at Domino's, you know, the, the long heated tube, for example, um, or you can have a steam bath that is similar to that. Um, and in the video on killing stuff, you will recall we talked about the heat transfer necessary to ensure that even down to the center line, we have uh, deactivated all of the microbes. And in this step in particular, which is called processing, and you say, wait a minute, processed food? And I'm like, yeah, this is part of where uh, these two words mean similar things in this setting. Uh, what we are trying to do is make sure that now in our sealed container, and this container is what we call hermetically sealed. So that means it's not just sealed in a way that's convenient so that uh, if the bottle tips over, stuff doesn't get everywhere. Uh, no, it is sealed in a manner that prevents bacterial contamination. So microbes literally cannot get back into this. So uh, the cans are not just merely lightly crimped, but they are in fact uh, some form of chemically bonded shut. There is, uh, for a good jar seal, there is a similar polymer lining doing the job here and here. Uh, next time you open a bottle, 
uh, go look inside that lid and you'll see that sitting there. And um, I'm going to click on the next slide. I'm going to show you that uh, these factors, even in an industrial setting, are not left up to the engineer to figure out. Uh, obviously, the engineer should check and make an estimate of what the materials are appropriate to be used for getting a good seal and should also uh, check that the times and temperatures seem reasonable. But really, these are uh, by and large completely specified by uh, regulations. So I'll show you the web page for that on the next page. Here we are on the FDA website, and we are looking at a small piece of a much, much larger document. Here we are, Guide to Inspections. Now, inspectors are those who are charged with enforcing regulations and making sure that companies are adhering to them. Uh, but it's a useful thing, of course, for the company itself to read, because if you want to pass inspection, you should be checking that your products uh, meet this guidance. Low acid foods, thing we'll talk about uh, in our, our last bit, um, because uh, that has to do with making the environment hostile to microbial growth. So that's just, okay. So coming down here, uh, you can see that there's specifications for how we handle containers, and there's specifications about how the containers are closed. There's even detailed specifications about what the cans have to look like, what their seams have to look like, how thick they must be, how long they must be, uh, things like that. So the material properties are very well specified here. And you say, well, wait a minute, where is the room for innovation? Well, if you come up with something new, uh, you propose it and it goes through a vetting process to be sure it matches these same uh, outcomes that are desired here. And it is a complicated thing to do, so maybe a small manufacturer might not do it, but uh, a large canning uh, can creation place like um, the companies that make all of the packaging that supplies to, uh, for example, soup companies, etc., they might undertake this innovation uh, because they would have the time and resources to uh, demonstrate its effectiveness. So I invite you to go look at this website yourself uh, at greater leisure because, um, well, it'll be coming up again. We're going to visit the FDA website quite a lot. Now, I mentioned in the opening video that another approach to uh, packaging things that we want to keep is this sh st shelf stable curtain packaging. And you've probably seen you can get fruits and vegetables with uh, this sort of packaging in addition to milk and soups. And so what's up with this? Well, part of what is happening here is you get a fresher. And by that, I mean less cooked taste relative to cans. Because, whoops, cans doesn't need two ends. Uh, because this is not heat treated the same way. This is not cooked in the can to the extent uh, that the things that are in cans and jars and bottles have to be. And you might say, well, you know, how the heck does that happen? Well, most of these packages are done aseptic. What does that mean? So A, absolutely none, septic, uh, microbial contamination. Aseptic means that there uh, are literally no microbes in the packaging facility. So once you have done things that makes your product clean, so the, the product is, for example, flash pasteurized, and then it goes into the filling, and instead of uh, let's see if I can find a picture here. So here's an image of a AICHE, so a student and faculty group from Bucknell, about four years ago when we went and visited the Weiss milk plant, as you can see. Now look in here, you can see that we were required to wear uh, little beanies on our heads so we didn't lose hair. Uh, we had to 
Uh, you had to wear a face mask if you had a beard. Um, and we, of course, were visitors. People who were touching anything uh, were a little bit more suited up in kind of lab coats and aprons. But you'll notice, um, and also there is a disinfectant that you used on your hands and in fact on your shoes as you walked through. And uh, similar facilities also, you might have to put on booties or change into uh, specific shoes to go walking around the factory floor. So that is a very clean and safe place, but it is not a place with a complete absence of microbes. In an aseptic plant, you wouldn't let people in to walk around like this at all, even if they'd taken extreme care. You have high uh, levels of filtration on all of the air coming into the plant. It's very similar to what you would see in a semiconductor plant, where uh, people, when they have to go in, are much more completely suited up, and there is no uh, possible interaction. So this is not uh, the sort of thing one can do at home. It's something that we needed the modern world to do because you need this high level of filtration. Um, you need a high level of sanitization. Uh, and of course, uh, you need to be able to uh, verify that everything is in fact staying this clean. Uh, but it is a really nice approach because that fresh taste results from less heating and things uh, tend not to be cooked, flavored. But on the downside, you will notice that it's not available for every possible thing. While you can get juices this way and milk and soup, what has been missing? Aha, anything that isn't a liquid. Uh, it only works for things where you can do that uh, flash pasteurization, the very rapid heating and cooling, which means pretty much no solids. Doesn't work for things with different thermal conductivities. So maybe that's something, if you're excited about this, it could be something that you could work on for the future because I think the world would very be very happy to have cardboard packaged, uh, aseptically packaged things like fruits and vegetables that were shelf stable for a very long time. But it's something that hasn't been cracked yet.